Okay, everyone, we're back to work on the 12 volt system. If you're not following along, all the 12 volt videos will be at the top, but the rest of the build for this truck, this is a 2500, Ram 2500, 2021, all those videos will be below it, well, most of them. I really can't fit all the links in the description anymore. There's so many. But uh, this video will be doing this, Renogy battery monitor. I can't remember what I paid for this, but I think it was a Black Friday sale. It might've been 120 bucks or something. I will, I'll link to this in the description, but I'll also flash the price that I paid right there at the bottom. Um, so it should be cool. It seems like it's real big. You say, oh, this thing's a monster. <laughs> it's, just, it's not that big. It's a real, it's a small, it's a small item. All right, here's where we're gonna be putting it. That is the perfect spot. You open the tailgate, it'll be sitting right there. Uh, when the fridge is out, yeah, you'll have to look around the side of it, but that's okay. I think this is gonna be good. And I like it high like this. I don't wanna put it like that. I think this is good. It'll allow for some other things in the future if I wanted to, like switches or something, or maybe a plug outlet right here. That would be nice. But, uh, so this is gonna go right here, and we're gonna cut the hole with this multi-tool, the greatest tool I've ever invented. Man, this thing's glued on. <laughs> this is glued on there. Whoa, I mean, this is not coming off. All right, well, I did a good job gluing this. Just take it slow here, because we don't want to screw this up. Okay. Going small at first is the right move. Don't try and cut it exact. That's it. Okay, so this is gonna be good. Okay, quickly, since we uh, have the head unit installed, we can start working on the wiring. Here's what they give you. They don't give you this. I'm gonna use that as an explanation. But uh, this is, these are the three things they give you. This is a communication wire. It's very long. It plugs into the shunt, and the other side plugs into the PED unit. Now, this is a power wire. You'll see right above where the communication wire connects to, there's a little green, little green box right there. It's got two flathead screws. Well, the, uh, the power wire goes right there and you, you just pick one of the screws and you, you tighten it down. It's a 20 gauge wire. It's very, very small. Now, this is the part that I think that everybody you know, might be confused about. Where does the shunt go? Well, imagine this is the battery, this, this white box, and this is the grounding wire, meaning it goes from the battery, negative terminal. In my case, it grounds to the bed of the truck. Well, the shunt needs to go in line. It needs to go in line. And which side goes to where? I'm gonna tell you right now. B minus goes to the battery. P minus goes to the bed. So what I'm gonna do is I have my wire in, installed already. I'm just gonna cut it. I'm gonna put an eyelet on one side, an eyelet on the other side, connect it up. But this is gonna get screwed to the box. That's what we're gonna do right now. Okay. okay I have my shortened wire here with the new eyelet. Found some red electrical tape. And we need a jeweler screwdriver. And this one is all rusted up. I actually had to grind it down and get the rust off. I need a new set of tiny screwdrivers, I think. So let's get this. I'm kind of just using the force here. Hmm. Oh, you know what I have? Huh. Nice. <laughs> okay, from my angle, I can see it. There it is. Okay. Now the worst thing you can do is not screw it in and then pull it out. Yep. All right, we're good. That's in. Mess off. All right, that's in. Now I am gonna need a a fuse. I'll have to look at the instructions and see what the amperage is. But I assume like a 2.5 amp fuse is gonna do it. I don't think I'm gonna need anything bigger than that, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. We're not gonna mess around with it right now. I don't want it to be powered up right now. Uh, let's run the communication wire. All right, I got you in where the fridge is, right? This is that. 
that hidden door. We've got the communication wire here. And this is the end that's going to go out and connect to the head unit. And this is going to go all the way over here. So we'll put that under there. Okay. And all we got to do is connect it right to here. Now, I, I keep calling this a communication wire, but technically it's got power in it too okay all right well we're all set up the only thing i got to do now is pull this battery and chop that ground wire in half um that's a little bit of a project but it's not that big of a deal okay battery cable is out it's pretty long and we only really need to cut it and like right there. That should uh, do it. All right, we got our short one, we got our long one. Let's get back in there and connect them up. Now we need to put this through here. All right, so now, as you can see, we have the B side going to the battery. It's in there tight. And we have this, and this is gonna get bolted to the bed. And then we are set up. All we got to do is, and I have this ran now, and the power wires ran. And all we have to do is just plug this, the other side, into the back of the head unit. All right, let's connect up this, this line to the bed, and then we'll do the head unit. I assume I've shown this one before, but this is where I'm attaching it to right there. So I just ground down the, like the bed liner. So I got it on bare metal. And that's it. We have operation. Look at that. How cool is that? But unfortunately, it's saying nothing. We got it all pushed in good here. Now you can see it says zero amps, zero percentage. It says 13.3 volts. Uh, so you might be wondering what's going on here. This thing has to, actually has to be calibrated. Um, now this is probably the one annoying thing about this. And that is, is that you need to reset this when it is completely drained of a battery or when it's 100% full. Okay, well, I left it out all afternoon and then this morning I left it out. So it's almost been 24 hours in the sun uh, charging up. Remember, I got 100 watts of solar and I got a 100 amp lithium battery. Now, we are going to do a couple things here. You can see also it says 14.2 volts now when yesterday I think it might have said, I don't know, 13.3 or 13.4 or something. So it's definitely gone up. And we're going to assume that this is 100% now. There's no way to really know. But, um, but yeah, we're going to assume it right now is 100%. So we have to do two things. Is that One is we have to reset the percentage. So now it says 0%. We need to reset that to 100. And we also need to set the amperage. You can see right there it says that it's 0.0, .0 amps. We need to set it to 100 amps. So it knows that the battery is 100 amps. And then it will, I think that that's, once it knows it's 100 amps, then it can, it'll calculate the draw and tell us how, what percentage we have left. And also I turn the, the um, there's basically no draw on the battery right now because I turned the, the fridge off. So, so first thing is we're gonna, we're gonna hit, I think, we're gonna hit okay for three seconds. And all right, so it, it thinks that the battery is, is, is a 100 amp battery. That's perfect. So how do we go back? Can we go back just by doing yes? All right, um, now we're going to hit the up button and we're gonna hold it for three seconds and this just should reset it. All right, that's it. So now we have, we have nothing going on here. We have no draw and we have no wattage coming in because we're inside the shop, but it's at 100% and it's 100 amps. So now if we plug the the fridge in, I assume, we're going to get a draw. Bring this thing out. Am I blocking you now? 
Yeah, no, no, you can you can still see it. And unfortunately, it's not showing any draw when it should be showing a draw because the fridge is on. So why is it not showing a draw? All right. I uh, I stopped working on this yesterday because I was confused and I got so much on my mind right now. We'll talk about that in another video, but I am doing so many things on the house. So I'm, my, my brain is not working correctly. Um, so I slept on it and I woke up this morning. It's like 8 a.m. And I, I think I know what the problem is. Uh, it's kind of stupid. It's just, you know, I just wasn't thinking correctly. And uh, it's it, it, none of the other grounds are going through the shunt. They're all just going to the battery. They have to go through the shunt. The shunt reads everything. So, for instance, this is on that fuse block. Well, the negative of that fuse block is going right to the battery. It needs to go through the shunt to the battery so that it can pull how much amperage it's using. Um, and the charge controller, the charge control negative is going right to the battery. Well, that's got to go through the shunt to the battery so that this can pick up how much wattage is coming in. It's like, duh, it just, um, it's, um, that's a little, little stupid. So let's change that up and I would assume we're going to get this thing working. I'm not going to be able to get any of those washers on. So, all right, let's see if that works. And then if it works, we can try and make it a little bit neater. All right, so we got it working. That was the issue. So we got 36 watts coming in from solar. And we have uh, plus 2.71 amps. You see that? Meaning the draw is... Well, there is no draw really. Um, and the reason there's no draw is because I don't have, oh, let's see if this is turned on. Yeah, it is, but it's not, the compressor's not on. Let's get the compressor on. I just lowered the temp on there it goes see that okay we're back in the shop here just wrap this thing up uh, I'll show you a close-up of this but now we're showing a negative um, it was showing a negative of a third of an amp but the compressor on this just kicked on and now it's actually at a negative 2.8 now this time limit on what I see right now is is that it's 35 16 or something. I don't know what that means. Minutes? Hours? I really don't know. When I first brought it in here and the compressor wasn't on, it said 99.59. And that could mean, this could mean 35 hours and 16 minutes? 35 days? <laughs> but uh, it seems like, I mean, it says here, I still got 99 amps. So that's it. So it seems like it's all right. I, 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 I guess that's fine. Um, let me check the temp on this thing. Why is the compressor on right here? I don't know. Well, I assume it'll shut off quick. Um, oh, it just shut off. So, and now we're at a, we're back to a third. That's cool. Okay. All right. All right. So that's it. And now I, I once I, I so you probably didn't realize this, but. There's been two weeks in between the time that I started this video and got up to that negative, you know, uh, splitting the negative around the shunt. That was, I started that just recently, like a couple days ago, but it was two week gap before that and the rest of this job. And I missed two weeks, which I, I, I haven't been known to do recently. I've been really keeping up with it, but I've had so much housework going on. It is crazy. And I'll probably just do a video of just an overview of all the stuff that I'm doing. And I just been, it's just been, it's been a lot of work and I haven't been filming it because I wanted to get it done. So much stuff. I'll do a video on that, but obviously we're still going on the truck. I ordered that bus bar. We'll put that in. 
I want to put some LED lights in here. You can see how dark it is. We're going to put a switch panel in here and then we'll probably put an outlet in here. We're doing a lot of things back here. So more videos to come. You know, I'll just try and keep up with once a week. I'm going to try and do it. Um, I really don't want to miss any more time, but sometimes it, sometimes it just happens. All right, everyone. I'll catch you later. See ya.